Hello, welcome back to Petrol Blogs Rubbish YouTube channel. As you can see, this is about the Camry, and today we're not joined by the goats but by the horses, um, and also the salubrious surroundings of what is essentially how am I going to put this building site surplus or building site out of sight, out of mind? Because um, we're having building work done in the house, so this is the area where the container full of materials. Um, bits of old wood, everything basically is dumped in here and over here. And one day this is going to be a world, world wildlife park, nature reserve, and an extension of the temperate rainforest. But anyway, that's for another day. I apologise for the wind in advance because I know my equipment isn't very good anymore because I sold it all when I put the channel on hold. But we're back and um, apologise in advance for the rustling. More paper because I have notes. I've actually made notes again for this one. And I'm a minute in, I've got no idea what I'm talking about, as always. Anyway, um, Camry. The reason for this video, I've wandered around the Camry, so you're not, like last, I think it was four minutes looking at a barn door last month, last week. Um, so we're going to actually walk around without a gimbal. So if it's jerky, no joking at the back. If it's jerky, blame the lack of gimbal. Um, but I was inspired to do this video by a ad, or an ad, an advert I saw on Bring a Trailer in America for a Camry V6 LE. And um, it generated some social media chatter, not a lot, um, but I put it on my Instagram story because I thought 11 grand, I think it was $11,000, was a lot for it admittedly a car in lovely condition. It was white, it had mint alloys, it looked, they looked like mint. I mean, they were the polished, what mine should look like. And I am at this stage, at this stage, if I do this properly, I'll be overlaying photos on top. But it's how I want my wheels to look. 45,000 miles, recent timing chain. It was beautiful. Um, and I thought, I thought $11,000, which is equivalent of about 9,000 UK pounds, is quite a lot for a Camry. So I looked on, um, and that was going to be the kind of hook for this video. So wow, because I thought that was a lot of money, but actually I've been on auto trader in the US and they go for anything between fourteen hundred and twelve thousand dollars depending on mileage. If you can find a low mileage V6 in America they go for ten or twelve thousand dollars. American viewers please forgive me if I'm wrong please let me know in the comments. It was a very quick glance on auto trader this morning. Um, you know and this is the last this is a lovely thing about a camera you can pick up four cylinder versions with four hundred thousand miles on the clock for a couple of thousand bucks um, and they look like they're barely run in. Cosmetically, they look as new. And um, and I want to remind her really of the difference between the Camry in the US and the Camry in the UK. In the US, this is very much a small, compact, a runaround, a car for students, a car for old people, a car, f a car you buy when you don't really want anything else. It's a car for people who travel from A to B and they really don't care about C. Um, but pretty much everyone in the US has heard of the Toyota Camry. It's, the best-selling passenger car out of there. Um, and as I always like to do, I like to compare some notes, some figures, which is why I've got my Russell in the hedgerow again. There we go. Um, I'm talking about the XV20, which is this one here, which is my personal favorite Camry, which is why I own one, and I always wanted to own this one. In 1997, it was, it became America's best-selling car and it ended the Honda Accord's five-year reign so and they sold 397,156 Camrys in 1997. Um, in the UK, UK how many do you reckon they sold? You're wrong. 1,878 Camrys were sold in the UK that year and that was peak for the XV20. The next year it was 1,139 then it dropped to 513 then 346, and then 207. And that was it, there was a peak, then there was another sort of, I say peak, it went up the next year when the next generation Camry came out. But the Camry's never been a big seller in the UK. Um, again, more figures, sorry for the rustling. The UK total for Camrys from 1983 until last year, and it's not quite accurate because it wasn't quite up to date, but give or take a few, because it is going to be a few, 38,058. That's how many Camrys have ever been sold in the UK. To put that in context, in 1997, December 1997, in that really big year for the Camry when it overtook the, Cam uh, the Accord again, 
they sold 44,254 of these. So in one month, one month in the US, they sold more than the Camry has ever sold in the UK, which is incredible. And then, you know, consistently sales have been 300 to 400,000 a year uh, in America. This is incredible. So I've always thought, you know, you could just, well, you walk out the front door in America, you're going to see a Camry. You go for a drive, you're going to see a Camry. Pop out for your lunch, you're going to see a Camry. In the UK, you'll be very lucky to see, and I mean lucky, you have to be very lucky to see a Camry in this country. Um, you might see one maybe once every six months. They just don't, well, people don't care for them over here. It's a very, very different marketplace for them. Which brings me on to my, my wider point about the Camry, really. You know I sold the Proton, you know the BMW is kind of for sale. Um, this one, I think, may have reached its end with me. The thing about this Camry is, it will outlive me. I don't know if I've got a month, a week, two years, 20 years to live, but whatever happens, it will outlive me. It's been magnificent. I've passed it through three MOTs. Bear in mind I pay 350 quid for this. I've sent it through three MOTs since then, and it's gone through every single one. The big fly in the ointment, and actually, before I mention the fly in the ointment, um, it's wanted for nothing, apart from basic maintenance and a CV boot, it's wanted for nothing. It's never, I just get the impression you could run and run and run on this on basic maintenance and it'll never let you down. And you've only got to look at the mileage of Camrys in the, U, in the US, for example, for that, for that. And I think you get the same impression of any Toyota, really. Um, they may not be the most exciting cars, depending on the, cars, <laughs> depending on the Toyota you buy, but they will run and run and run. However, however, an MOT tester spoke to me about this in um, January, he said, you really need to make some decisions about the, um, the underneath of this car because he's becoming quite rusty. Um, and I'm not afraid of that. I know there's, there's work I can do to, to improve the underneath. Um, but, but, and I'm trying to think of a word to describe the lack of peel on this car. And I've, I've sent, I've sort of focused on the word rampant, rampant lack of peel. This has been there since I got it actually. Um, that's got steadily worse. But there is lack of peel appearing everywhere. And I mean, every single panel. I mean, again, that's been there from the start. But if you look at this one on the roof, um, what started off as a small, well, that this one here started off like that and it's progressed like that in two weeks. This one is new, never seen that one before. Um, they're, like, they're making wonderful shapes, but you can see this is the start of this. This is the start of the lack of peel hell. Small blots that become, well, small acorns that become big acorns. Nope, <laughs> big oak trees. Um, and on the boot lid, again, lack of peel. I mean, there's no, there's no lack of left on them, most of the bonnet, most of the um, bumpers. But it is becoming, as I'm calling it now, the Tatty Camry. It's no longer the Toyota Camry, it is the Tatty Camry. You know, this roof, lack of peel, this lacquer on the roof is not long for this world. Bonnet has so far escaped. No, it hasn't. It's here as well. So, yeah, it is peeling its lacquer. Then we've got what we have always classed as crazy paving on the front bumper and the wing. So it's got crazy paving, which was all the rage in the, um, was it the 70s or 80s? Maybe it was the 90s. Maybe it was the um, changing rooms era, was it? I don't know. This here looks like a marshmallow. So one of those cakes. So it is looking tatty. The tatty Camry is looking very tatty, and it's a shame. It's a shame. How, then the other big, big issue, which is getting steadily worse, the door, the bottom end of the door. If you remember from a previous video, this was um, the result of a marina incident, which sounds like a Guns N' Roses album that never was, um, when a trailer reversed into the Camry. It was reasonably new. I think it was only four, five years old at the time, and the bodywork wasn't done to the best of standards. So, rampant lack of peel there. Horrendous rust. And I went to a body shop to see if they could um, sort this and they said there's nothing they can do. You need a new door. Um, if, I, if I press it, which I'm not, not about to do, it will fall apart. Um, it's, it's incredible, isn't it? It's like creme brulee. And the wheels are horrendous. The polished wheels, they should look like that. They don't look like that. Tyres are good, really good Tom Conte's, 
that's bad as well. So it is looking really tatty. And do you know what? Tattiness doesn't worry me. I'm quite happy with that. But the underneath and the door and the fact that it needs a timing belt, the timing belt is due, are making me question the wisdom of keeping this because I'm never going to sell it. I'll never sell my Camry. But however, I will give it away. And he called him my friend. He's more than that. He's going to be part of the family next year. Mr. Adam White. He grew up in this car. Well, he didn't grow up in this car. That would be weird. But he spent some of his formative moments of his youth sat in one of these seats. I can't, Adam, tell me which seat it was. Was it the left, right or middle? Tell me. Um, because the previous owner, Jim, who I always used to think was named Ken. I always get it mixed up. But his name's Jim. He was a scout leader in the same village of Adam White. And he took Adam to scouts in this car. So Adam knows the back of these seats like the back of his hand. And he wants his car. He was a little bit miffed, I'm guessing, when I managed to get this car before he did. It's all thanks to my sister. Thank you, Tracy. Um, so he wants this car. He doesn't want this car for the comfortable seats. He doesn't want to cut this car for the amazing cup holders. Four cup holders. He doesn't want this car for the amazing comfort, the CD player, the air climate control, or the tatty bodywork. He wants it for the engine. He wants it for the 188 brake horsepower V6 engine to put in his Toyota MR2. And normally, and this channel in particular, would shy away from um, sacrificing a car in the name of an engine swap. I mean, how many ZX16 valves have been lost? How many Zara six, uh, VTSs have been lost in the name of engine swaps? Far too many. Um, so it would be a shame for this Camry to be sacrificed in the name of an MR2. However, in this scenario, I think it's the right thing to do. I'm not saying it'll be today, tomorrow, next week, next month, whatever, but I think it's the right thing to do. It feels like it's going home. The engine will live on, and Adam is the rightful heir to this car. So I'm not going to charge him for it. He can have the car. This is like one of those sort of 1980s sort of entertainment shows where you say, big surprise for you tonight. Coming live from Australia, it's your long lost cousin you haven't seen for 50 years. I'm not saying that, I'm saying, Adam, you can have this car in exchange, maybe in exchange for a couple of days of your expertise with the rest of the fleet. How about that? Yeah, I kind of a 15 minute video of nothingness really, isn't it? But then kind of expect that. But there we go, that is, that is the dilemma with the Camry. Oh, and also the other, the other thing I need to point out is the tax has expired. The um, Club Petrol blog ran out in July last year. I've been inundated with two people asking if Club Petrol Blog's coming back. And, well, I didn't. I mean, I stopped Club Petrol Blog because nothing was happening. And I thought, well, I can't charge people to join the club when there's no club. However, is there a demand for Club Petrol Blog? Would you like to see it come back? Let me know in the comments. And by the way, talking of which, I still have the best commenters, commentators, commenters, best community, let's put it that way. But I have the best community on YouTube. So thank you ever so much for all your comments and positivity and goodwill. Um, I'm not saying this is the last Camry video, but it's time on the fleet could be coming to an end. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.